Hi, this is Billy D. If you enjoy this podcast, please like and subscribe. Let's grow NAI basketball. Thank you. Cascade Hoops Talk, bringing the world NAI basketball one podcast at a time. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Well, it's Monday, October 30th. Uh, This is our first episode of our new format. Uh, Bear with me. We'll learn this together. Check out the video I put out. It'll tell you how to get us either video or audio uh, to uh, share in the show. Try to spread the word as much as possible of NAI basketball. I'll go through and grab as much as I can. Uh, At the very least, if you tag me on Twitter, uh, that'll always help. You can email me stuff. There's, if you look at that uh, video I put out a few days ago, it gives a lot of instructions on different ways to get me things. But the show is going to be uh, probably four to five times a week. A lot of it's going to be dependent on my travel schedule. And um, we'll focus on the top 25 and kind of go from there. Other stories throughout the NAI. So let's just go off. We'll kick this off. We'll get the first one out of the way. And I'm sure it'll be pretty messy, but let's go. So College of Idaho, uh, their idol so far, uh, they're going to go over and they're going to play Providence, as you can see here, and then they're going to play Northwest Nazarene at home, and that's a real rivalry game. That's a game to really watch for. That's their uh, crosstown rivalry, their uh, NC2A Division II program. Grace, they've obviously been active. They beat Kentucky Christian, and they beat Madonna in that uh, Lancer kickoff classic. And let's take a little bit deeper look at those games. Uh, They beat Kentucky Christian, as you can see, 112 to 50. Cade Gibbs, he scored 20 points. He only played 17 minutes. Elijah Malone, he had a double-double, 12 points, 11 rebounds, also in 11 minutes. On Saturday in that Lancer Classic, I thought they'd get a tougher game out of Madonna. Uh, They beat him pretty soundly, 89-66. Elijah Malone, 19 points, six rebounds. And tough Jake Wadding, a double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds. So they're going to go, and I think on Wednesday they play at Purdue. And then uh, they're coming out to Oregon. They're going to play Oregon Tech and Bushnell at Oregon Tech. Uh, number uh, number three, Arizona Christian. Uh, they're idle so far. They're going to play some uh, Montana schools to start out. Langston, uh, they're idle for a bit yet. That's all they need is more time to get ready. Uh, Georgetown, uh, they played that uh, exhibition game with University of Kentucky. They ended up losing 92-69, to uh, but in the first half they were very competitive. Uh, Georgetown is going to be really, really tough. Uh, they really acquitted themselves uh, quite nicely in that game. And then uh, today they played Virginia uh, University at Lynchburg, they beat them pretty soundly, 107-51. Uh, uh, Rashad Bishop, 17 points. Uh, Camp Brooks-Harris, 14. And then Tay Dozier had four steals. Tay Dozier, he's coming into his second year. Remember, he was a freshman last year. Uh, that's probably a name we're going to call quite a bit. Montana Tech, uh, they beat Portland Bible. Uh, you can see this, 116 to to 43 uh portland bible's kind of a cannon fodder out here in the west Uh, but it's a good warm-up game for them one thing on that game uh you can see asa williams he scored uh what 27 points 12 for 15 from the field and then uh ifane okk he had 16 points on 8 and 11. Uh, i know that caleb belich i saw some video of him practicing but he did not play in this game they might just be giving him a little more time to get ready for the regular season oklahoma wesleyan they kicked off their season on saturday they beat southwestern christian 88 to 57 let's take a deeper look here uh jaden litsky he had uh 23 points nine rebounds caleb stokes he had 15 points nine rebounds so Oklahoma Wesleyan, obviously they're one and zero. You can see it right there. And then they're going to play Science and Arts. That that should be a really good game. And then they're going to return the the uh, Southwestern Christian game and and go there on November 
fourth. LSU Shreveport has idle until November 1st. Uh, Indiana Wesleyan, uh, they, uh, well, everybody knows they, they fell to Indiana Tech on Friday, 85-83. That was a great game. We're going to talk about that. And then on Saturday, they they uh, they rebound to beat a good cornerstone team, 97-83. So they're 1-1 one and one right now. But, hey, most importantly, Coach Tonegal, everybody knows now, 500 wins. Youngest coach in, youngest men's basketball coach in the game to break the 500 mark. In other words, he did it faster than anybody for his age. Uh, and it's uh, the great thing about Coach Tonegal is it's not all about wins and losses. Uh, he really is committed to, you know, building young men. You've heard him talk about it many, many times. Uh, but uh, very, very good job by Coach Tonegal there. Congratulations, Coach. And uh, you got that monkey off your back and you can move, move forward. Here's a little video. Let's see if I can... Uh, play this. This is uh, in the locker room. Hey, listen. In basketball, the box score never lies, right? That's part of it. And and something I know, just being in this profession, there's just a lot of me first in this world, right? Like, especially coaches make it all about themselves. So there's one stat I want to point out, right? Because I know that one thing that's not been talked about once that I've ever heard. Is Coach Tonnell just becoming the youngest coach in college basketball history to 500 wins? Yeah! Really great to see that celebration, see those guys celebrate with Coach Tonnell. I, I don't know if you could hear him. He said he was telling the players for the first time he was that Coach Tonnell was the youngest coach to hit 500, 500 wins. So let's take a look at the games this weekend. Uh, Friday, it looked like they were in control. They were um, up up by nine to uh, – I did this backwards because I wrote it on the Indiana Tech page. But they were they were up by nine at the half. And then Indiana Tech uh, put together a 51-point second half. They were led by Nigel Martin. He had 20 of his 30 points in the second half. Uh, Brady Titus, he added 13 for the Warriors. Indiana Wesleyan's Griffin Clewer, a double-double, 16 points, 10 rebounds. And then on Saturday, as I said, they beat a really good uh, cornerstone team, 97-83. Cademan Bontrager, I hope I didn't say his name too bad. He had 19, and uh, Griffin Clewer, a double-double, 14 points, 10 rebounds. So two double-doubles over the weekend for Clewer. He was uh, all-conference last or all league, I guess that's what they call the the uh, crossroads there. Um, but uh, he's a very, very good basketball player, and he's getting off to a great start. So they're they're one and one. Uh, don't worry, they're going to be okay. Freed Hardeman, they're they're idle until uh, Halloween. And St. Thomas, uh, you know, they played George Mason in an exhibition game. They did. They had a really good showing. Some real tough showings by. Uh, NAI teams against D1. They lost the game 64-52. But, of course, uh, they were up in uh, Washington, D.C. at Tacoma Park to play Washington Adventist. So they got the game at George Mason. And then uh, they beat, on Thursday, they beat Washington Adventist 75-72. And actually a really good ball game. Let's take a look at that. Uh, they were down by seven at half. And then they made a comeback, 75-72. Boy, Coach would have never lived that down, <laughs> losing there. Milton Matthews, this is him right here in this picture on the left. He had 19 points, four rebounds for the Bobcats. Josh Thrower, he had uh, 17 points, three rebounds. And then Sirius, they call him King Warren. Uh, the coach is real high on him. He's a super athletic guy. 17 points, eight rebounds. So St. Thomas is 1-0 and on November 2nd, right up here. They're going to play Faulkner and then uh, Mobile. Union, they're idle until November 2nd. That's going to be a good game when they play Indiana Wesleyan right here. Uh, you know, Coach Burton's going to, he's going to have a team to be reckoned with. Morningside, they got kicked off this week. Uh, they had to go to Waldorf. That's never an easy trip. I don't care what records are. 
when a GPAC team goes in to a North Star gym, it's always tough. Uh, but they, they were able to defeat Waldorf 84-64 on the road. Uh, they're 1-0. Let's take a little deeper look. Uh, they had really balanced scoring is what I really noticed when I went through their score sheet. Aiden Vanderloo, Eli Doble, and Joey Scoff, they all had 14 points. This is really a core right here for uh, Coach Miller. And, uh, well, he got it kicked off. Now they got to play Kansas Wesley and that. They, boy, that'll be a game. And then Bethany, and that'll be this week. As, that'll be later this, this weekend. Huntington, they got a blowout victory over Grace Christian. They, they uh, played their first official game in their new arena. But Lane Sparks, 1,000-point club. Congratulations, Lane. I mean, that's really great to see. Uh, the the uh, Foresters are 1-0. and Let's take a deep, just a little deeper look at that game. Of course, we say Lane Sparks, 1,000 points, uh, 111 to 58. Uh, Lane had 19 points, four rebounds. Landon Jordan, he added 18 points. And the Foresters, they held Grace Christian to 19 first-half points. So it was quite a defensive show. The Foresters now are 1-0. Uh, they're going to play Kentucky Christian. That's a, that's a game they should win. Oh, that's the kiss of death right there. And then uh, they got to play uh, West Virginia Tech on the 4th. So that's Friday and Saturday. The Masters, uh, they're idle. Uh, they're going out to um, Oklahoma City, and they're going to play at Oklahoma City University in that Abe Lemons Classic. Kansas Wesleyan, uh, they dropped one uh, at, against Dickinson on Friday. We'll talk about that game in a minute. And then they turned around, and they had a pretty good rebound win, and they beat uh, Bellevue 70-63. to So they're 1-1. One and one. Let's look at their games this weekend. As I say, Friday they fell to Dickinson 73-71. That was a one-point game inside of 10 seconds. The Coyotes had the ball. They had a chance. Uh, but a steal by Dickinson State with seven seconds to go sealed the upset. Alex Littlejohn, he had a, he had a great weekend. Uh, he had uh, double-double, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, Dickinson State had five and double digits. Dickinson State actually looked pretty good. They were led by Gus Wright with uh, 13 points, four rebounds. On Saturday, as I said, they had a good rebound win over Bellevue, Thurbo Bile, 18 points, seven rebounds. And Alex Littlejohn, he just keeps rolling. Double-double, 10 points, 13 rebounds. That guy is tough on the boards. He's only 6'6". He's a wing. He's Well, only. But he's in the college game. I guess that's small, right? But he's a, he's a very, very good rebound rebounder. Uh, so Kansas Wesleyan now is 1-1. One one. Mid-American Nazarene is, uh, plays on the third. Wayland Baptist. Uh, they play... Well, you can see it here. On the 30th, they play Bacone and then Florida College. Uh, William Penn, uh, they they went to, uh, I'm trying to remember where this tournament was. What is it, at Governor State? or No, I, I think they just, I don't remember where it was, and I apologize. They played at, e at East West. They play, okay, I know what I'm thinking. IU Kokomo was at Governor State the night before. I apologize. So William Penn played East-West. They struggled with them a little bit more than you would expect, and then uh, they fell to Kokomo the next night. Again, let's just take a little bit deeper look. Uh, they, were, they looked really sluggish in that first half. They trailed against East-West. They trailed by as many as 13. Uh, they were up two at half and then they carried on they had a big run into the second half and then they kind of cruised to victory cj washington he had 22 points five rebounds for the statesman and then on saturday uh they fell decisively to iu coke iu kokomo looked really good this weekend they beat governor state and then they beat william penn uh kokomo jumped out to a 21 point halftime lead i mean they never look back javen brown he's he uh he had nine uh, well-traveled Max Newman. He had a double-double, 22 points, 11 rebounds. He's played at three NAI schools, and it really looks like he's found a home. 
Uh, he's a great player. He's a good guy. You know, he was a uh, freshman player of the year at Bethel, I believe, in 1819. Or um, I might have my years wrong. And, and I might have my, if I'm wrong on that, somebody correct me. Uh, but you know what? He's listed as a junior. I mean, it, with COVID, these guys can play forever. I mean, they're qualifying for Social Security and they got two years eligibility left. Uh, so William Penn, rough start. Uh, you know, they lost a lot of guys. Uh, they got to play Hastings, and then they're going to play uh, at Concordia over the next weekend. Southwestern, they played Randall. Uh, they just pounded them 124-67. Uh, the Builders, they took a 69-26 halftime lead, and they, they just blew Randall out. Uh, Kevin Clark, he dropped in 29 for Southwestern. So Southwestern is 1-0. and They're going to take on Haskell Indians Reservation, Indian Nations, and then Park and Baptist Bible over the next few week over the next two weeks. Uh, Northwestern they're idle until this weekend. Uh, Mobile they played Pensacola Christian. It's like they're like forty five minutes apart. Uh, they beat Pensacola Christian seventy nine fifty one. Pooh Frazier sixteen points three rebounds. Damari Jones thirteen points five rebounds. Uh, so they'll be in action again this week and then they'll play southeastern and st thomas this weekend so after this stretch right here after that st thomas game i mean we'll know where mobile is right that's good that's a tough stretch right there uh, antelope valley this game here it says october 1st on the nai page but antelope valley doesn't play caltech until november 1st that's a typo in there if you're scoring at home we already talked about the Indiana Tech game, so, <laughs> oh boy, Coach ought to be sick about that. They beat Indiana Wesleyan. I don't, they have got Indiana Wesleyan's number. I tell you, the, I bet you Tonical just hates seeing them on the schedule. But then the next day, they, they fell to Spring Arbor, uh, um, 83-69. Spring Arbor is a lot better this this season. They've They've been down the last couple of years. We already talked about the Friday game. Again, Nigel Martin, he's a transfer out of Santa Fe College. Uh, he really had a great game. Saturday, in that loss to Spring Arbor, the, Coug the Cougars, uh, Gabe Niehoff, big 6'9", Gabe Niehoff, he went off. He scored 34 points, 13 rebounds to lead Spring Arbor to the upset. Dallas Roberts, he had 16 points, 3 rebounds uh, for the Warriors. Olivet Nazarene, uh, they play Taylor on the 30th. They played an exhibition against Great Lakes Christian. I watched that game. Uh, I, I think Olivet's going to be a little bit better than people are thinking. Uh, they, they looked pretty good. Hey, I want to show you. I, I found this uh, video on Twitter. Uh, Latrell Franklin, this is uh, out of Mayville, is going to feed uh, Thomas Geiske. Uh, it's one of the sweet. I, I appreciate Two, th two attributes about a basketball player. Number one is a guy who can make a free throw. You know those guys that go to the line, you just know they're automatic. Uh, the other is a guy who can make a pass and find a guy like eyes in the back of his head. Watch this. I'll, I'll run it a couple times. That's sweet, isn't it? <laughs> As I said, that's La that's uh, Latrell Franklin uh, feeding uh, uh, Thomas Geiske. If I'm saying his name right, something wrong. Somebody from uh, Mayville, let me know. But I, I love that play. I thought that was pretty uh, pretty cool. Uh, if you didn't see it, I think Thursday, UT uh, University of Tennessee Southern uh, they beat D1 Tennessee. Tech, 74 to 70, caught the eye of some big hitters. The guy from Dirt King, look at that, 80,000 views. Huge win. Anytime an NAI team can upset a D1 team, I mean, that's big news. Hat tip to the Firehawks. Great job. Thank you very much. And then, uh, so this is Owen Braxmeyer, uh, 10 points, 11 rebounds, in McPherson's win over... Uh, Benedictine. Let's take a listen. 
It went pretty good. It was a good team win. We battled. Uh, we jumped on them early. I think we were up 44, 46, 25 at the half, and then we kind of stalled out there in the second half, but then we found a way to win, and that's what we're here to do. Um, it's really important that we get that first win, especially that first game, so we're 1-0 not starting in the loss column, and I think it builds confidence in our guys. Even if we didn't play our best basketball, we still found a way to win, and that's what's most important. I'm feeling so thank you to uh, to McPherson for sharing that on Twitter. I was able to pull it off there and uh, share it with you guys. And I really I really appreciate uh, being able to do that. I have a, a real passion for our athletes being uh, heard and seen. Uh, they, they really, well, you guys know, they work their tails off and they deserve some credit. So if you have any uh, anything like that, uh, share it with me at least at the very least take me on Twitter so we'll be back there's there's not that many games this week but we'll be updating you regularly we'll try if there's any uh, we'll try to get some coaches if there's anybody interested in doing uh, four to five minutes for one of the shows this week just send me an email uh, shoot, shoot one on Twitter text me send me an email and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow and I, I'm sure this will get smoother Thank you very much. Is Billy D Cascade Hoops Talk. Thank you very much for supporting our podcast. Please like and subscribe. Get out to your local NAI school because NAI basketball is the best entertainment value in America.